So I recorded a shorts version of this tutorial and I wanted to record one that's a little bit slower because you got to cram a lot into 60 seconds. But I wanted to just show the modeling process for this for creating a subdivision surface object starting using the curves function and the curve tools. First we need to come over to preferences and make sure type in curve here in add-ons make sure you have curve tools enabled. I also have the light theme enabled just because curves show up better in it. Let's come into the top view, turn off perspective, shift and A, and we're going to put a circle right in the middle. Press shift and D, Y, bring that up about there, S key, to sort of scale that down just a little bit. Now, if we come over here, if I select both of these, we're going to note that in the curve edit, there's a Boolean spline here. Then we have another tab that says 2D Curve Boolean and Intersect Curves. So it's a little bit confusing. This references curves that are within inside the same container, not two objects, but one object that has two separate sort of curve islands, if you want to think about it that way. But this is for two objects that are separate objects that happen to be Bezier objects, and they need to be 2D. So that's really critical. And then we come over here, and we're going to do 2D Curve Boolean, and there we go. So press the tab, and we want to remove the originals. I'll hide them just in case we want to come back to them. Whenever you approach building a polygon mesh, there are often multiple ways to do it. And we're going to start off using the Bezier tools here to create this H shape. And I'm going to come back into edit mode first off, and I'm going to select top and the bottom, bring up the context menu, and we're going to subdivide that to add a few more points. Then we select everything, and we're going to invoke outline. And it doesn't always work right off the bat. So you just see we don't see anything until you come over here and you increase the size. So I'll make it, oh, I don't know, about like that. It's sort of arbitrary. Don't worry about the exact size. But the important point is that the inside and the outside profiles have the same number of points. So if we were to come over and take a look at this now, I could fill this. We could look at that in a filled mode. But we don't want to use that fill for the polygon structure that we're about to build because we're going to be building a subdivision surface object with it. And all of these triangles are going to cause a problem. But what we want to do is I'm going to turn off fill for right now. And we're going to look at another option here. If we come way down to the bottom, we can see it says curve resolution, and we're going to show that. And this is just a nice, easy way of visualizing what this value over here is. And we want to reduce this in size to four. That's four divisions per Bezier segment. And then to remove that, you just press the escape key. It's just a display thing. You can kind of see the tessellation, but having those dots there is actually kind of useful. Leave edit mode. We're not going to use the fill, again, for the reason that I've described. And then we're going to come over and we're going to convert this explicitly into a mesh. Tab key. Now I'm in edit mode in the polygon editor and we can see those individual divisions. Press the A key, bring up the context menu, and then we're going to bridge those edge loops. And we have a much better polygon structure for subdivision surfaces now. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select the inside and the outside. Now, it's easy to double click there, but let me just show you in case you're not aware of this on a more complex shape. And then you come down to by trait, select non manifold, and that will also select those open perimeter edges. Rotate the view, come up to edge, and we're going to extrude the edges. Press the Z key so that we can bring that down just a little bit, just something about like that. Now we're going to come down to a tool that is really awesome. It's called the Shrink Fatten Tool, and it just basically moves the edges along their own normal directions. I'm going to come to the top, and we're going to note that I'm in Active Tool. Active Tool means you're going to be able to select the actual elements to move them, but we've got overlapped elements right now. So we're going to switch back over to Select Box, and then we get this handy widget. You can just start pushing until you can see that open up about like that. So there we go. 
come back up here to extrude edges and then Z. And we're going to pull that down just a little bit. Now, if we just turn on subdivision surfaces at this point, we're not going to have quite the control in place yet. But let's take a look at this. Let's take that up to a value of two tab key. You can see that it's, it's sort of ill defined and we need it to be more defined. So let's turn that off temporarily. Press the tab key. And we're going to select those bevel edges. Let's come into perspective mode. Sometimes you, you kind of want to be in perspective mode. It's a little bit easier to control. We're going to come over to the bevel tool and we want the segments to be two and the shape to be one. And that will create boundary loops around the existing edge, just like that. So we're going to pull in there and this is going to be important for subdivision to prevent curvature from coming into the flat areas. In fact, let me undo that. I think that's a bit much. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. Now, now if we look at this subdivision, let's press the tab key. It's better. It's more controlled. Let's look at shading. We need to turn on smooth auto shading, but it's still not going to be quite as controlled as we want it to be. So right here, I also want this to be sharper. So there are two things that we're going to do. I'm going to come over here and select those and those. And we're going to do the same operation here. And we can kind of see the effect that that has immediately on the subdivision. But I'm going to select this edge loop and this edge loop. And if we look at this again, back over here in outline mode, do you see this subdivided edge and this subdivided edge? Curvature is actually crawling into this flat area. And that's a boundary representation of that. It doesn't get flat until you're in this interior area. And when you're doing hard body modeling, you really want it to be flat in some areas where you want it to be flat. So we're going to come up to edge and we're going to do an edge crease. And we're going to pull until that subdivided boundary hits the original boundary, the original selected edges that we have. Okay, so we're, we're going to come in and we're going to do the same thing here, 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 press shift and R. And you see how that snaps that in? Let's do the same thing on the interior. In fact, let's turn off subdivision temporarily just so that we can see then turn it back on and then shift E and we're just going to pull that in until the value down here gets to one and that will control that really nicely. Let's turn on shading. And there we go. So the benefit of this is, I mean, it's really well controlled, but the benefit of doing this way is it's really deformable too. If you needed to deform this in some way to give it slight curvature, this kind of mesh setup will give you that kind of control. 